Well, Physics 1100 students, these are the graphs from the lab today. And uh, we started with this one, number three. And this is a uniform motion graph, um, standing still, going to the right, standing still, going to the left. And if you look at what I've done here, I've calculated the slopes of each one of these segments, which gives us the velocity during that period of time. So the slope of this line is 0.25 meters per second for three seconds. Stopped, negative 0.25, stopped, 0.25, stopped, negative 0.25, and zero. And I've constructed that graph, and here it is. So if you go back and forth, you can see that it has the same shape, uh, these you know uh, two kind of pyramid shapes in the center. And let's have a look at what this motion looks like. I've got it set to playback. I have, I have these all set up and ready to go. So it's going to be standing still for two seconds, going to the right for three seconds, standing still for a second, going to the left for two seconds. And these are all uniform motions, standing still, going to the right again, no acceleration taking place here, just uniform motion, standing still for two seconds, and then going to the left again. And as you can see here, our final position is right back where we started. And then there's another two seconds of being stopped. And if you want to look at that again with the velocity, and drag this back. And here we go. This is with the velocities so they're just constant velocity that's why the lines are flat there's no acceleration taking place velocity drops to zero velocity is now negative velocity is zero again positive which means we're going to the right and at all points in time the slope of the line uh, up on the position time graph is the height of the velocity time graph. So here the slope is constant. That's why this line is also constant. And that's what that motion looks like. Then we moved on to this graph. The first one is parabolic. It begins with a negative velocity. That means that the problem starts uh, with the person standing two meters to the right, that's the initial position, with a negative velocity moving to the left, the line is sloping down, which means that our, our, uh, our velocity is to the left, that will gradually slow and become a velocity of zero. And here we see that at the five second mark, we have a flat slope, which means that the object or moving man is stopped, and then it will gradually get steeper and steeper and steeper, which means picking up speed to the right. And we eventually end up with the same slope that we started with, but now we're moving to the right instead. And I have that one queued up as well. So now this is, um, you know, not the same numbers. It's the ones that I gave you in class. And if you look at the velocity time graph, it looks like this. So we're starting two meters to the right. And when we play this back, put this on a little bit slower because it is only four seconds. So here we go, moving to the left and then coming to a stop right here. And this is the key point that you need to take away from this. Negative velocity, negative slope. Zero slope, zero velocity. Positive velocity, positive slope. At all points in time, if you calculated the instantaneous slope of this curve, it would be mapped down here. So steep, uh, steep down to the left is fast negative. Steep up to the right is fast positive. Let's continue the motion. And now he's come to a stop, but now he's going to go back in the opposite direction and speed up as he goes. And if you look at the acceleration time graph, well, it is just a line above the x-axis, a constant acceleration, slowing the person down. So as he's moving to the left, 
the positive acceleration will slow him down. Once he's stopped, the positive acceleration will speed him up to the right. The next graph is this one, which is a bit trickier because we have a uniform motion here with no acceleration, a uniform motion here with no acceleration, and then there's a, a kind of like a joining period that links the two of them together. When we calculate this slope, it's one meter per second. So for the first five seconds, it's one meter per second. And then during the last five seconds, the slope is minus one. And down here on this graph, you see my pen handy. So what I, what you did was if this was zero, you know that this is one, this is negative one, and you went over here to the first five seconds. And then here in the last uh, five seconds, it was down here. So that's your V for the first five seconds and your V for the last five seconds. And there's a transition between these two points. So here the velocity is changing from there to there. And this is the acceleration phase. And if you calculate the slope of this line, the acceleration is the change in V over T, which is minus, let's suppose that, yeah, that's the one, is minus two meters per second all over four seconds, which is negative 0.5 meters per second squared. So when we construct our graph in, uh, in FET, and it's over here, this is what it looks like. We have a phase where we're moving with uniform motion until you get to the five second mark. Then there's a deceleration to zero, then an acceleration to the left, and then uniform motion to the left for the rest of the motion. So that's 14 seconds long. Let's play that back. So here we have uniform V is a constant V until we get to the five second mark. At the five second mark, you will see deceleration begin to take place. And then here at the seven second mark, we're stopped. And now we're going to accelerate to the left. And at the nine second mark, it's just going to be a uniform V for the rest of the trip. And let's drag that back and look at the velocity time graph at the same time. And you can see here we have constant velocity, acceleration phase, and constant velocity. So that would just be constant V, one meter per second. Then you're going to see at the five second mark, the velocity reduce. And then when it crosses the X axis, he stopped. Now he's gonna speed up to the left and now continue at a uniform V to the left. And the acceleration time graph here looks like this. It's no acceleration, a region of acceleration just for that four second interval, and then no acceleration again. Now let's go to the back of the sheet and we have this situation. Here's a V versus T graph where we're starting at minus one meters per second. That means that the graph starts with us moving to the left at minus one. And then we have acceleration phases and if we calculate the slope of each one of these individual lines, we can find out what the acceleration is during those intervals. For the first two seconds, acceleration is one. Next two seconds, it's negative one. Next two seconds, it's one again. Then we have a four second interval with no acceleration, but the velocity just continues at one meter per second. So he's not stopped, he's just not accelerating through that phase. And then a slowing phase where you come to a dead stop uh, at the 12 second mark. So that's what this one here looks like. And I'm going to get rid of this for now and this one for now, just so we can look at this. So flat means you're stopped. So stopped here, stopped here, stopped here, and stopped here. When the slope goes down, it means moving to the left. When the, so moving to the left here, moving to the left here. There's only two places. Everywhere else he's going to the right and to the right. So let's play that back. So to the left, stopped, 
to the right, stopped, to the left, stopped, to the right, uniform motion, no acceleration taking place, and then at the 10 second mark, deceleration until he comes to a complete stop. And let's look at the velocity time graph along with that one. Um, so you can see here we've got moving to the left, coming to a stop, moving to the right, stop. So you can see here where that line flattens on the position time graph, it crosses the x-axis on the velocity time graph. So he stopped here. See that? So here are the positions where he stopped. Right there. Right here. Right here. And right here. And if you look at the acceleration time graph, let's get rid of these for a second. We have positive, negative, positive, no acceleration, negative. And well, let's look at the uh, position of velocity. Let that play out all the way. Let's go back just in case you want to see the two of it together. Stopped. Right. Stopped. Left. Stopped. And then to the right. Uniform motion. No change in the velocity here. And then coming to a stop right there. Final one. We have this one. Uh, this one, the acceleration phases are given to us. We don't know what the starting velocity is. We don't know what the starting position is. So we're just going to assume zeros. And when I put those in, all of these accelerations, it's going to look like this. Here are all of the accelerations. So that's the same graph that you see here. And now if we go to the position, again now, if the line is sloping to the right, it means that we are moving to the right. Flat means stopped. Stopped, stopped, moving to the right, moving to the right. And on the velocity time graph, we can see here that acceleration here, no acceleration, deceleration, um, stopped, acceleration to the right, acceleration to the left. The slope of the V versus T graph gives you acceleration. And so if we watch this just with the uh, position, accelerating to the right, uniform motion. Decelerating to a stop. Standing still. Picking up speed to the right. And then decelerating and coming to a stop. And I'll do that one one more time with the velocity one for comparison. And here we go. Accelerating to the right. Uniform motion. Slowing down to the right, eventually coming to a stop. No velocity and no change in position. Accelerating to the right. And now decelerating to the right. And those are your graphs, folks.